Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the unofficial first day of summer on The Savage Nation, which means we can don our shorts and let our hair down. I mean, the news is so horrible that I'm not going to do the news. Look, I saw a story this morning that I was going to lead the show with. Mayor Kami de Blasio signs a Fair Chance Act, which uh, would make it a violation of the New York City human rights law for any employer to make any inquiry or statement about an applicant's pending arrest record or criminal background prior to an applicant receiving a conditional offer of employment. What does that mean? Well, it means that you could hire someone with a DUI to drive a school bus, you can drive a per, uh, hire a perv to be a, uh, a teacher. You know, stuff like that, something commies would like. But I said, you know what, there's only so much people can take. If de Blasio is not going to allow employers to ask for criminal records, you're going to have to hire criminals. I said, that's a story that I can deal with. Then I said, you know what, hey, it's summertime, and the living is supposed to be easy despite the fact that we have a crazy man in the White House who is so mad to destroy the country that he says today that he's going to squeeze every last ounce of progress we can make as long as I hold this office. I said, you want to eat your heart out? Talk about the madman. Because the only thing that's going to stop this madman is God himself. It is literally going to take an act of God to stop this lunatic. There's no opposition party. He owns the media. The people have been deballed. There's nothing to stop him from imposing the mad agenda of the communist left. So I said, I'm not going to eat my heart out over that either. Maybe God will intervene and stop him in some way. I don't know how. So I said, you know what I'm going to do instead? So I start to read. I like to read blogs. If I read a news article, I'm one of the few people who actually read bloggers. I like to see what people say because graffiti, graffiti has always been the voice of the people, whether you know it or not. There's actually a long tradition in human history of people who like write dirty things in bathrooms. But if you read some of them, they're very funny going back to grade school. I mean, some of it was ludicrous and stupid and adolescent and idiotic and perverse. But some of it was funny, right? Robert, right or wrong, right? Some of it was funny. Graffiti has long known to represent the voice of the people in some ways. Certainly it doesn't represent the liars in the media or the liars in, in, in Hollywood or the liars in, in Congress. So I read the graffiti called bloggers. And I start to see my own statements being repeated without any alliteration to me, such as when the chrome was thick and the women were straight, without saying Michael Savage created it. I said, that's good. I'm entering the, the American mind. So I said, wait a minute. Why don't I get the glossary of savagisms going back over the years and ask the audience in the new Obama era of fascism, communism, socialism, and the big lie, where everything that is a lie is held up as the truth and all the truth is held up as lies. Why don't you go back from some of your savage speak glossary of savagisms and ask the audience which one of these phrases should be dropped from my glossary as politically offensive in some way. So let me go back to my glossary. Baggy-eyed Bolshevik, I call Jim Lehrer that. That's when he was once a moderator. Remember baggy-eyed Bolshevik? That's what he always has been. Briefcase mafia trial lawyers. Bypassed Bolsheviks and Buicks would be retired, retreated leftists known to haunt Palm Beach County, Florida. <laughs> Caesars of Hollywood, actors and actresses who move among us as if they were gods. Christophobia, the loathing and hatred of Christianity by bigoted, intolerant, secular leftists. Clipped hair, mean-faced women. That defines what? Self-evident. Compassionate conservative, Michael Savage. Condo commies, wealthy socialists. Corned beef commies, unhealthy, wealthy socialists. <laughs> Crack pants, pants worn by skinny middle-class kids who emulate gangbangers. Crescent News Network, CNN. The Tsarina of Education, the clipped hair, mean-faced women who dominate the National Miseducation Association and control it with a jackboot. Demikins, Republicans who act like Democrats. That would be all of them. Demon cats are a euphemistic term for godless Democrats. The Dodge City of Talk Radio, the Savage Nation. Dungism, I can't say what that is. Well, no, Dungism, a school of liberal art. That's right, that still holds true. 
uh, empty skirt, a pancake faced teleprompter reading leg crosser on Fox News, EPA, Environmental Propaganda Agency. From the Boulder Dam to Dental Dams. <laughs> from, from Boulder Dam to Dental Dams in one generation. And the, def <laughs> the definition is from historic feats of engineering to corrupted acts of fellation. <laughs> This is funny. I got to tell you, I'm enjoying it. You know, the only way to test whether your writing is still good is to read it yourself cold and see if it still makes you laugh. That's funny. Okay. From kid gloves, I, some of this is maybe borderline. I don't know if I can even read this on the air. From kid gloves to latex gloves. <laughs> From kid gloves to latex gloves in one generation. I cannot read the definition. From St. Christopher's medals to crystals in one generation. That's going from traditional faith to New Age cosmic flakes. The Grim Reefer Gang, advocates for medical marijuana. The government, the government media complex, unholy alliance between big government and media elites. Head cutters and headscarves. Evangelists who spread the religion of peace by cutting people to pieces. Hieroglyphics set to a beat, rap. Reverend Jesse I. Jackson, the pastor of the First Rainbow Church of Shakedowns. Hitler in a dirty nightshirt. Osama bin Laden, he's dead. Hollywood idiots, mindless thespians from the land of make-believe. Houses of porn and scorn, today's liberal colleges. Illiberal, what liberal used to mean. Infidels, the savage listening audience. Institute of Lower Living, colleges where junior sheeple can get the finest illiberal education that taxpayer money can buy. Islamo-fascists. Dirty nightshirt clad radical Muslims who walk with a Quran in one hand and a bloody rusty knife in the other. Knee jerk conservatives. Reflexive right wingers who never ask why when conservative leaders say drink the Kool Aid. Lexus liberals. Kerry brand liberals who despise the nation that made their wealth. That's good. Lunchroom Lenins. Found mainly in southern Florida at early, early, early bird phase. <laughs> Uh, Madeline Halfbright, former secretary of hate under Bill Clinton, who in my day would have run a deli on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Mayor Any Newsom, Any Tusom Newsom, ex San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom, who violated California state law by issuing thousands of gay marriage licenses. Well, today he's a he's a demigod. He was ahead of his time. Mind sluts, news chicks who prostitute their ethics to espouse the party line. Mushroom boys, L.A. screenwriters. Ninth jerk at court of Schlemiel's. Can't say it without it. Nostrilman, Henry Waxman. Remember him? The guy with the big nostrils? Old York Times, the once great, great lady deflowered by Pinchy Sulzberger's juvenile worldview. PBS, Palestine Broadcasting System. Pinchy Sulzberger, the left-leaning czar of the Old York Times and son of Arthur H. Sulzberger. Pot in every chicken. Pot in every chicken. Legalization of marijuana. Psychological nudity exposing the savage truth. Rat Boy, John Walker Lynn, the so-called American Taliban who stabbed America in the back. He's still in the can, by the way. Republicrats, turncoat Republicans, John McCain and other left-leaning anti-conservatives. I wrote these in 2000, by the way. Here's a good one. Many of you remember this. If you remember this, will you raise your left hand? Red Diaper Dopa Babies, RDDBs, psychotic 60s leftovers who mix too much marks with their marijuana. <laughs> Savagettes, the babes of the savage nation, of which there are 12. Sheeple, the unthinking gullible masses. Sheocracy, the reigning rule of radical feminism that emasculated America's men. Socialism, organized crime with an army. Spawning like shrimp. See, now this is a bad one. This could get me into a state of a Donald Trump. Spawning like shrimp. I can't mention what the definition is. Stand up Stalins. Those would be anti-American comedians such as Bill Maher, a big phony through and through. A man who doesn't have a piece of red blood in his body. The stench from the bench is making me clench. That's the odorous rule of liberal judges. The Supremes. That's the U.S. Supreme Court justices. TNN. Taliban News Network, also known as CNN, trickle down in morality as perfected by Bill Clinton, the course material in the majority of America's public schools. And finally, the entertainers, Kasabi, meddlesome, clueless female performers, a la Barbara Streisand, the Barbara Boxer. Now let's have some music, 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 music on the Savage Nation. How can you do the same thing every day? Every day the same thing? You want me to talk about the Confederate flag? Hey, Mike, talk about the Confederate flag.
Hey, Mike, be like those other talk show hosts. Talk about the... Come on, man. You heard it already today that you're going to hear all day long from the, the, the copycat Yentas who follow him. What do you want from me? He writes the script and they read the, the tune the rest of the day. I write my own script. That's all. It's original. If you want to comment on any of this, 855-407-282, lighten up. Lighten up because only an act of God can save us from Barack Obama. There's no opposition party, no opposition press. The people have been nullified. And so here we are. We're sitting here in a, in a, in a petty dictatorship that's going to metastasize into something much worse, Teddy. I can guarantee you. Poodles may be outlawed before I know it. And then what are you going to do? I'll have to hide you. You'll have to become a Murano poodle hidden in the basement of the house. I'll have to hide you and turn you into something else. Yes, we have entered the new dark ages of the United States of America under this liberated philosopher called Barack Obama. If you care to comment on my savagisms by adding or subtracting any from that list, the phone number is 855-407-282. Now, I could make it easier for you and do a regular talk show and say, Mayor de Blasio signs an act which says it's illegal to, uh, for an employer to ask for criminal records. I could ask you how you feel about that. How does it make you feel that a convict could be driving your kids to school? Uh, what will happen when de Blasio turns New York into the next Ferguson or Baltimore? What do you fear is on Obama's progressive agenda for the rest of his term? Now, why do I ask that question? Because I'm about to play Mr. Obama's statement that he's going to squeeze. Well, listen to clip number one and you'll get the picture. How am I going to spend whatever political capital uh, that uh, I built up? You know, the list is long, and mm -hmm. my instructions to my team and my instructions mm -hmm. to myself have always been that we are going to squeeze every last ounce of progress that we can make as long as I have the privilege of holding this office. It's not a privilege. It's a shame what you've done to this office. You have debased the White House. You have deflowered our liberties. I, I can go down the list, but then I'll blow my mood, and I don't want to do it. Do you see how evil this man is? No matter what he gets, he wants more. This is the mark of a Marxist. There's no enough for them. There's no, not enough progress. The definition of progress will only be determined when you are in chains, when you, the taxpayer, are actually in chains working for the illegal immigrant, then they will have enough progress. Do you understand where this goes? Do you understand the sickness of the progressive? Do you understand why they have to be stopped? And do you understand why there's no stopping him and that only an act of God can stop this man? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So continuing with Michael Savage uh, sayings, I found two more. Russia and China have no estate tax. Obama is to the left of Putin and China on taxation. How do you like that one? Here's another savagism that will outlive me. If you're pessimistic long enough, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> Not bad, Mike. I'm one of the only talk show hosts who have sayings that will uh, be remembered for a long time. I don't know anything created by anybody else that will ever be remembered. I think one of my best is when the chrome was thick and the women were straight. I'm finding that popping up. That's a nice one. That has a certain ring to it. But I think that the police will soon be visiting me and asking me, did I actually say that? Do I rescind it? Uh, or will I have to come before the Pope for, let's say, a lead enema in order to rescind statements like this? Maybe, this, maybe, this, maybe the Pope can now start to uh, reenact the Middle Ages. You know, he's doing it now with uh, making certain that any scientist who doubts any of the theories of uh, flat earth are excommunicated from the Church of Science and their funding is cut off along with that witch Barbara, whatever her name is. If you're pessimistic long enough, you'll never be disappointed. Back in 2000, I published a book called The Savage Nation. I'm not trying to sell you a book. If you want to buy a book of mine for the weekend, you can buy Countdown to Mecca. But I go back and I look at how prescient I am and I talk about Al Gore had he won the election in 2000. Remember they were playing with punch cards, hanging chads, remember that? And I say, what would have happened if Al Gore had won? And I looked at it and I said, oh, my God, let's go back to 2002 where I say, what would happen if Al Gore had won? And let's see how many of these things that I predicted might happen sarcastically in some regard 
under Obama. One, homosexuals in the military and homosexual marriage. I swear to God. I said that would happen if Al Gore won. So check that off the agenda item. Number two, affirmative action or the Fairness for Dummies Act. Three, reparations for non-slaves by non-slaveholders. Four, hate crime laws aimed at straight white males. Five, racial profiling laws aimed at straight white police. Six, a United Nations tax or a world tax. That's coming, by the way, after the pub's visit. Seven, free prescription drugs. Not only for the elderly, but also for AIDS patients. That's a, it's a reality, right? Eight, delegitimizing the Boy Scouts or the Fairness to Predators Act. It's happening, man. I said it would happen. Nine, outlawing homeschooling or the Freedom from Learning Act. Here it comes. Look at number 10. Arrest, ban, or rewrite the authentic Bible as a hate book. Now, who is the prophet of talk radio? Me. 11. Mandatory application of Ritalin or Ritalin-like drugs to any child with spunk or call it the Security for Children Act. Hey, number 12. The complete elimination of borders with Mexico or the Fairness to Latinos Act. I'm a prophet and I know it. Number 13. Partial birth abortion or infanticide and the sale of baby body parts or the Senior Citizen Life Extension Act. This is pretty good. I am proud to be an American. I am proud to have a, an original brain. And I'm proud to have a radio show. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. You want to throw up? You want to get sick? I'm having a nice time. I'm trying to have you have a nice time. We have a phony White House I can't begin. I'm livid, livid. Yesterday, that nobody, Prime Minister of England, that fraud, Cameron, had the nerve to say that ISIS doesn't stand for Islam. Are you ready for this story? ISIS executed men, women, and children. It found guilty of offenses against Islam, including 74 children executed who refused to fast for Ramadan. Now, Ramadan, so far as I know is a fast related only to Islam. It's not related to Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism. The blood-soaked Nazi executioners of ISIS put 74 children and more women to death for such offenses as practicing magic and refusing to fast during Ramadan. And our president said nothing? Cameron said nothing? Can you understand what I'm saying to you? You know how guilty you are? Do you know how guilty you are of being cooperating with ISIS by not speaking out against it to your friends, to anybody you can find by shaking them and saying, do you know what the Nazi Islamists are doing? Do you understand you're living through a new Holocaust? Do you understand that if you lived through the 1930s and the Jews and Christians were being put into concentration camps, you would be another good German? Do you understand you're a good American? I know you can't stop Obama. I know you can't stop him because nobody can reach the man. He lives in his own twisted world. But you can change public opinion. How about all you good liberals in Manhattan right now listening to the show think this is all a joke? Why are you saying nothing? Why are you doing nothing? Why are you not raising money to stop them? Why are you still raising money for stupid things like global warming? What is wrong with you people? Are you that stupid? Have drugs gotten to your brain? Okay, that's all I can say on this children are being executed for not fasting during Ramadan and we're supposed to be brainwashed and say this has nothing to do with Islam the real blasphemy is the lie the big lie that's being put out by all of the news networks they're killing people for behavior seen as illegal based on the Quran burning people alive firing squads beatings beheadings drowning explosions throwing gays off roofs the gays say nothing they celebrate and party on with makeup and celebrate like that's the whole thing without saying okay we're liberated now we're gonna liberate these people they do nothing for anybody what can I say to you drowned in cages having their head blown off with explosives burning them alive in a car hit with a rocket launcher it's a snuff group Isis is a worldwide snuff group and until we get a leader who will stand up and say it like it is you are in danger Okay, that's all I'm going to say. I told you I was having a good time, but there's only so much you can take until you say, when is someone going to say something? Where is Obama on this? 
Where is Cameron on this? Nowhere. So let me continue with my prediction from 2002, what would happen if Al Gore had won that election, when I said Gore's contract against America, and take a look at what the bullet points are from that book and compare them to what's happened under Barack Obama. Uh, number 10, arrest, ban, or rewrite the authentic Bible as a hate book. What are you, six months away from that one? Mandatory application of Ritalin to any child with spunk or the Security for Children Act. 12, complete elimination of borders with Mexico or the Fairness to Latinos Act. 13, partial birth abortion or infanticide in the sale of baby body parts, which they will call the Senior Citizen Life Extension Act. 14, increased license for Hollywood's violence and pornography, which they will call the Freedom of Arts Act. 15, socialized medicine and a national health plan or the Freedom from Bad Behavior Act. 16, the No Limits on Lawsuits Act. 17, mandatory suicide for se the mandatory suicide for six seniors or the Saving Social Security Act. That has not yet been enacted. Not yet. Uh, 18, the Fairness and Talk Radio Act, i.e. the end of talk radio. Not yet. 19, the end of the Electoral College and the Congressional Redistricting of America to ensure that never again will the Democrats be threatened or the One Dunce, One Vote Act. 20, the complete seizure of all guns or the Freedom from the Second Amendment Act. Finally, 21, the abolition of our existing Constitution, which they will call the Freedom from Freedom Act. Some of it, Swiftian, some of it, a savagism. Unfortunately, all of it tragic. 855-407-282. KVOR Radio. Monty, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? <clears throat> yes, sir. I want to add to your definition, your uh, list and your definitions. <clears throat> One is uh, Demerat. Another word for Democrat. Rats are the last to occupy the ship, but the first to leave and occupy the lifeboat if the ship is sinking, leaving others behind. Demo rat, okay. yep, one of, my, one of my creations. People don't even know how many syllogisms I've created that are mine. They think that they came out of the air, but they didn't. Yes. They didn't. The next have, you, have you read my newest book, Countdown to Mecca, because I'm going to send you one for July 4th? Uh I've already got it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, you see that? The listeners who like me buy it. The real loyalists buy it. The others listen. They don't do anything for me or any. They don't care. Everything's got to be free. I don't care. Oh, by the way, speaking of free, tomorrow we announce the scholarships, the five twenty thousand dollars $20,000 each winners. Let's hear a cheer for the Savage Scholarship Fund. After seven, reviewing seven, 1,700 or so applicants, what a job that was. It was so beyond anything I thought it would be. Five lucky winners will be announced on this program tomorrow, each of whom will win a $20,000 scholarship. I realize it's not as large as Bill Gates' largesse, but I do what I can in my own way to, uh, to advance the agenda of American patriotism. At least I put my money where my mouth is and don't use it while claiming to be one of the common people uh, to buy more apartments in Atlanta so I could be a slumlord. This is the Sabbath. You know, don't you love that all of the talk shows who are screaming about how bad the economy is and how horrible Obama is and how they're taxed too much, flying around in their Gulf Streams, being slumlords in Atlanta, owning 33,000 apartments? Don't you love that? And yet they make believe they're Joe Sixpack. I want to know how they get away with it. Does anyone know how they get away with it? How does somebody own 13,000 apartment units in Atlanta and claim to be a man of the people, a Joe Sixpack? How is that even possible? How do they complain about Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton raking in money while they own 13,000 rental apartments in Atlanta and claim to be one of the one of the blue-collar Joes? How do they get away with this? I don't understand it. Are the people on the right that gullible if they don't look into Gulliver's Travels? 855-400. Monty, thank you for that call. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Christy, you want me to talk about? Or you want me to talk about Obama and Cuba? You want me to talk about Obama, uh, new relations with Cuba without rele releasing the political prisoners from jail? But, you know, you could look at that and say, well, wait a minute. We have relations with China, which has political prisoners in prison. They still harvest organs from political dissidents, right? So, I mean, why is Cuba any different? Why? Because it's close to the shore. We know that the Castros are murderous dictators. We understand that. And we heard a few peeps out of Rubio. We heard a few peeps out of Cruz, uh, Celia Cruz's grandson. 
Hasta la reina Isabel by la danzón. I remember that song from Orquesta Aragón. I almost feel like having Latin music played right now. Orquesta Aragón is a great song. Hasta la reina Isabel by la danzón. Y su orquesta. I love all of that old Cuban music before Castro crushed the heart out of the music business in Cuba and turned them into the minions of communism. Yeah, there's, some st there's still some good music, but it's not like the days before he took over. So he establishes relations with the North American Union. Hmm. He wants a new North American Union. I guess, I guess he can make Cuba the 50, uh, six, 52nd state. Puerto Rico would be the 51st state, right? I mean, he should, you know, Puerto Rico's about to go belly up because it's a welfare state. 60% of the, uh, it's unbelievable, 60% of the Puerto Ricans don't work there on welfare. You hear this? That's a natural for Obama. I think that they should make it a state, and then they should take in Cuba and make that a state as well, because that matches Obama's vision for the future. I, come on, man. Wake up out there. I, I want to wake this show up today. I'm like a tumbler in the Catskill Mountains tonight. I don't want to get too serious. There's only so much I can take serious. I'd rather be a tumbler in the Catskill Mountains for the summer than a talk show. <laughs> you know what a tumbler... <laughs> No one knows what a tumbler was. I right, turn it off. This is too slow and too sweet. I like the really fast uh, pachanga. That's what I really want. See if you can find any pachanga. That's what we need to play. If not, I'll start playing it. I got a, ket a drum. I've got a set of timbales next to my desk. Did that come through the microphone? You don't know I keep a set of timbales next to my desk with a cowbell. Why? To remind me of the good old days that never were. You see, if I was still living in a world that doesn't exist anymore, instead of being on talk radio for the next 10 weeks, I would be turning the clock back, I don't know how many decades, and I'd be getting ready to go away and work this summer, 18 hours a day, in the Catskill Mountains, which don't lo no longer exist the way they did. They were, uh, uh, it was a time in America that I can only describe in writing or in poetry. There's been some YouTube stuff on it. It was a magical time when entire lower middle class families would leave, let us say, New York City and surroundings like that, and they would go to a hotel for two weeks on their vacation where they would eat nine meals a day and, you know, entertain themselves. The whole family would go together, teenagers with the parents, young kids with the parents, and those who didn't have the money to go to a hotel would go to what was known as a bungalow colony, which was a recreation of an old European shtetl. They didn't know that then where there were like 15 or 20 little cottages in which a whole family would live. And uh, they would spend the whole summer there. They were magical times for me. I would build tents, go on hikes, find uh, arrowheads, swim in creeks, fish, learn how to shoot a twenty two in the uh, valley with the country kids who actually lived up there and had rifles. They taught us how to use the rifles, which I thought was amazing. I didn't know that you were even allowed to have a gun. Being a kid from New York, guns were illegal with the Sullivan Law. But the country boys had these 22 rifles, and we go into the valleys and shoot tin cans. And the, the smell of gunpowder, I can still smell it. You know, Proust wrote about the smell of petite madeleines. I can still smell the gunpowder from the early days. <laughs> but the, the 22s, remembrances of guns past, to be honest with you. Those were glorious days. So those days did exist. And right now, I'm thinking about them in some way. That's why when I played that song, and I said, we're going back to 1959. What was that song we played that I said, 1959, Robert, that you started the show with the second one? I Only Have Eyes for You, the Shabbat Shabbat music. I remember it was 1959, that one. Okay, let's play it again. I'll go all the way back. We're going to do nostalgia on the Savage Nation for people over the age of 93. You know, this is like such an affront to the advertising community. He's talking to the old dead people of America. Yeah, who buy everything, you idiots! The millennials can't buy a belt buckle. My audience buys everything, you idiot, you. All right, so 1959, the Shabup Shabup song. I want you to picture Route 542, Route 42 in the Catskill Mountains. My uncle Mo has a new Plymouth with the little fins on it, but not the, not the Plymouth Fury. But it was still a nice car with four doors, and we're driving back to the place and we come upon a car wreck while this song is playing on the radio and there are people all over the road, a family in a car wreck, bleeding, dazed, upside down, car in the ditch. And it's like a shock 
to see that for the first time, a car wreck, I mean, and people see this all the time who do this for a living, but if your family never sees it, it's pretty amazing. And every instinct in me said, stop the car, let's get out, get out and help him. And Uncle Mo looks, looks back and goes riding on and does nothing. I was shocked by that. Well, he, didn't, he wasn't a bad guy. This is what the average person would do today. Don't tell yourself you'd be a hero because you're doing nothing about ISIS. You're not even speaking out against it. You're doing nothing about Obama. You're even afraid to talk about him. You're doing nothing. So don't tell me my uncle was a bad guy. He drove on. He didn't want to get involved. And I, I never forgot that as long as I lived. And I think now of the emergency room doctors and nurses that I watch on a show. I love to watch a certain TV show. Uh, I forget, you know, Emergency Room Las Vegas, Emergency Room New York, Emergency Room uh, Los Angeles, Emergency Room Boston. I cannot believe the people who work in ER rooms. I think that they're, they're saints, every one of them. I've never seen anything like the miracles they perform. I see doctors and nurses, technicians. I see people coming in that if I looked at them as a layman looking from the outside, it's astounding they can be made whole again. I don't know how they do it. A bullet wound, a knife wound, a face uh, burned off, a person who fell out of a window, they can fix them. I don't know how they do it. And you know, they take it seriously. I saw one last week of a, uh, an ER doctor. I believe he was a neuro, yeah, he was a brain surgeon. And he came in, a man had been hit by a car and bounced against the pole, and they got him in and the guy's brain was expanding inside his, his uh, uh, cat, you know, the, the, the skull. So he opens up the skull and the brain is expanding and oozing out like toothpaste. And he couldn't sa save him. There was too much, con too much damage, internal damage. You know, the neurosurgeon literally was going to cry. He said, I went into this because I, I think the human brain is amazing. And when I lost the patients, like a piece of him died. Do you realize that there are still saintly people out there despite the fact that you never see them? Instead, you see these sick girls dis displaying their bodies or boys getting naked to try and get in the news. Do you understand how sick Hollywood is? Do you understand what Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Sulzberger have done to the country? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, uh, July 4th weekend, now all of the intelligence agencies, which have very little intelligence, are warning us of an attack by uh, this group and that group. They remind me of firemen who were caught setting fires themselves. I am so sick of these trillion-dollar agencies who do nothing but feather their own nest. I'm sick of it. Oh, we're worried about ISIS now over July 4th from every schmuck in the intelligence community, including Dianne Feinstein. Suddenly she woke up from her somnambulous slumber. Oh, they could strike. D DEA, strike. Uh, DHS, they could strike. Everywhere you turn, they're telling us not to enjoy July 4th. What a pack of self-serving you-know-whats. Why don't they go out and preemptively arrest them all? They know where they are. They know which mosque they're hiding in. They know that they're not old Irish ladies in wheelchairs. Go arrest them, for God's sakes, and take them off the streets instead of telling us to worry. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yes, I'm a savage. Whatever political capital uh, that uh, I built up, you know, the list is long. And my instructions to my team and my instructions to myself have always been that we are going to squeeze every last ounce of progress that we can make as long as I have the privilege of holding this office. Fidel Obama. Cuchero, Pate, Pate Cuchero. Welcome to the Savage Nation, hour number two. A little Cuban music to celebrate the dance of the devils. The Castro brothers finally getting what they've always wanted, which is locking up all their opponents in the hell holes of their prisons and being rewarded for it. 
by Barack Frankenstein Obama. He's going to squeeze every last ounce of progress out of the office while he's still there. Listen, here are some of the items that are still on his list. Giving Iran nuclear weapons. He's calling it an Iran nuclear deal. A major infrastructure spending bill, which means giving the unions trillions of dollars in building funds for the highways. Reforming the criminal justice system, which means let everyone out of prison who can threaten the middle class. Two years of free community college, which means give dummies access to community college so they can wreck the, the university system. Other items on oh, uh, oh, Frankenstein's list includes closing the prison at Guantanamo Bay and giving back, I guess, giving back uh, that part of uh, Cuba to the Cuban people. That would be fair. Renewing the Export-Import Bank. A new major cybersecurity bill, which means he can spy on kindergartners playing with fake iPhones. Paid sick leave, free universal pre-K. The man doesn't know what he's doing. Do you understand? He doesn't even know what's happening in Greece and what it portends for this nation. Does he not understand someone has to pay for all of these stupid socialist programs that he and his Girl Scouts are trying to impose upon us? Okay, it's summer. I said I wouldn't do the news, but there's only so much you can take until you say, how can you take it anymore? It's a nation of cowards with no opposition. The world is burning. ISIS is kidnapping, raping, murdering, shooting children, raping children. He says nothing, Franken, Frankenstein Obama, nothing. Instead, he celebrates gay marriage. Where are the gays? I want to know where the great men of conscience are. All of the gay men who are celebrating gay marriage. Why do they say nothing about ISIS? Where are they, these great social progressives? Answer, nowhere. Where are the great lesbians of our time? Why are they not speaking about the uh, kidnapping and rape of children and women uh, by ISIS? Why? Where are they? Nowhere. Riding motorcycles in San Francisco, uh, uh, expressing their freedom. Unbelievable to me. Look who are the people of conscience today. I want to show you how reversed everything is. We, the conservatives, are the people of conscience. We are the only ones speaking out about what ISIS is doing, while the so-called progressive liberals say nothing. So answer me who are the people of conscience. We are. They're not the people of conscience. They don't care about anybody or anything except their own pleasure, their own self-interest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything has been upside down. Yesterday I talked about the corruption of language itself. We, the conservatives, are actually the liberals of our time. And the liberals of today are the fascists of our time. Do you understand how they've controlled the language? How they switched everything on you? We're talking about liberation. They're talking about the imprisonment of anyone who opposes them. Some of them are even saying you should, you should execute anyone who opposes the theory of global warming. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We're entering a new dark age under Obama. A hundred years of darkness under Obama after he leaves office, it'll be almost impossible to reverse it when he packs the court with these psychopath leftists. Okay, so I started the last show, the last hour, by talking about savagisms from uh, the history of the savage nation going back 21 years. I am a national treasure. If I were not who I am, I'd be celebrated all over the country. There'd be statues to me if the country was run by patriots instead of being run by uh, the opposition to patriotism, the opposition to borders, language, and culture, the Spielbergs, Katzenberg, Hatzenbergs, Matzenbergs, the Geffens, all of the America haters, the twisted sisters of America who have poisoned the culture, destroyed the mind of America with the pollution that they put out called movies. No one watches more movies than I do, but I'm very selective in what I choose to watch. And I am telling you the sickness that emanates out of these minds is overwhelming. And you wonder why... The radical Muslims are on the warpath. I'm not talking about ISIS. I'm talking about even a conservative Muslim living in the country who wants nothing to do with ISIS. You ask them why they hate America in their heart of hearts. They don't want to see ISIS here. They just want to see the pollution stopped. They just want to see a wholesome America where the vermin of Hollywood are stopped and curtailed from putting out this filth and this violence on a daily basis. You can't blame them, can you? They actually agree with you. All right, so these are some of the topics. Let's play some of the music. What are some of the savagisms or savage syllogisms that you like that I missed? Let's go to some of the callers, WABC. Mary, which one did I miss in my list? The one that says there's smoke in the cabin. This is when you felt like an airline passenger who smells smoke in the cabin, but you cannot convince any of the other liberal passengers 
that they're all in danger. <laughs> That's a good one. And Obama. Right, the, liberal, the liberals, are, if I'm running through the aisle saying I smell smoke, they say, sit down, lunatic. There's no smoke in the cabin. The plane's not going down. The pilot's not a drunk psychopathic. Liberal from hell? No, no, the pilot's not nuts. He's driving us into the ground, taking us into a mountain. No, he isn't. You're nuts. He's not nuts. The pilot's locked himself in the cabin, and he's driving the plane down into a mountain as fast as he can. He's not nuts. You are. Exactly. I love that one. Yeah, yeah so do I. I almost blew a, a circuit on that, just reminding me of it. Look at him wearing the commander-in-chief outfit. I love that one. Barack Obama, commander-in-chief. Isn't that amazing? A man who hates guns. A man who's never fired a BB gun. A man who hates the police and hates the military is commander-in-chief. Does that not say everything you need to know about who he is and what he's done to this country and what he will do and how it's almost impossible to reverse the damage he will do? It says everything. I don't know. So what are you doing about it? Let me see. You see what the man is doing. You know the liberals don't care. You know that they're ignoramuses on drugs. How do you cope day to day knowing what's going on if the plane is going down? I'll tell you how I cope. Um, I, even though I try to talk to my liberal friends and family, that does not help me, even though I try to be there and tell them what's going on. But you know how I cope, to tell you the truth? I wrote a song parody. I won't sing it to you, but a Thank really God. good song parody on their smoke in the cabin. And that's how I got through the weekend after you expressed Are that. you a songwriter or are you just uh, playing with words? I'm a songwriter, but I'm mostly a pe song parody writer. I used to. Oh, so you're a songwriter. Well, go ahead and sing it. If you're an actual songwriter, let's hear the lyrics. Well, I'm not a singer, but I can, I can uh, rap. I'll tell you, give me the lyrics. I'll sing it. I'm a singer. Let me hear some of the lyrics. Let me hear how they go. Okay, it's, it's to the song Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin. But I don't know how that I don't know that song. But now, uh, just give me the lyrics. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll set it to my wait. But shh, shh, shh. give me the lyrics. Give me the first two. One stanza. Give me the first stanza. Okay, I took a jet plane just the other day. It rose to the sky in the usual way, but there was soon panic and prayers to pray. Toxic smoke was filling up the plane, but the guy beside. Wait, wait. wait. Toxic smoke filled up the bay. Up the plane. No, no. Toxic smoke filled up the bay, meaning the, the airplane's bay. That would be oh, more rhythmic. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just helping you rewrite the stanza. Okay, now I'm going to set that to a tune. What's the first line again? I forgot. I got half timers today. Okay. I took a jet plane just the other day. It rose. No, I can't even remember it. It rose. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I can't remember it. My brain is not functioning properly. I'm going to send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca because you're such a good natured listener, you're so loyal to the show. I just love it, and I thank you very much. 855-400-728 to Savage There's Smoke in the Cabin. I guess that could be played to uh, Smoke It's in Your Eyes. That's a famous song. Why don't you get that song, Robert? Smoke It's in Your Eyes. I, I don't know who did that one. They're moving tables for them onto the stage, and you're sitting in the back near the toilet. It's too slow. No one knows my references. Here's the problem. My references are so good that only Jerry Lewis would get them and laugh. But Jerry Lewis doesn't even listen to the show, so that's the problem. There'd be an audience of one. There's probably 15 people who get what I say most of the time. The rest are basically stuck in the mud, say Confederate flag. They can talk about it. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying, you know, some of my references are too esoteric and time, time uh, sensitive. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. I don't think anyone under the age of 79 understands what I'm <laughs> I don't know. My, the guys who work on my show, I can see them on Skype. They're 29, 25 years old. They love me. They love my, they don't even, they get it. They don't know the time, but they get the joke. How come you can't get the joke? Okay, let's go to some more of the callers here. Uh, like when you, okay, KSFO, my home station, San Francisco. San Francisco, Cal, what's on your mind? It reminds me, remember when uh, Hyman Roth said about uh, Mo Green? Not even a plaque, not even a statue. I always think of you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He had a vision. He created Las Vegas. He carved it out of the desert. There's not even a plaque. Yeah, I love it. So what's the reference? Uh, oh, just as far as savagisms go, let's go back to uh, when we called you General Savage. And there's still uh, some of your listenership that gathers to this day and has a laugh on uh, Sean Pencilhead and Susan Sarandon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my all-time personal favorite, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't say it without laughing, wait, Ed Asinine. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's funny. So where do you guys meet and talk? Where, where, where do you get together, like, what do you do? Just when, you know, you see another uh, 
uh, member of the Savage Nation. You know, we're all secret members when we... we uh, yeah, of course, we have to hide our patriotism and our love for the country. That's right, under the new free America, under this dictator in, uh, in the White House with the, with the commander-in-chief bomber jacket, another great hero of the American left. So, Cal, how do you cope knowing what's going on in this country with cabin, the cabin on fire and the, and, the, and the pilot being drunk on his liberalism, driving us into a mountaintop? How do you deal with this? A couple of things. Well, of course, listen to your show. I got to the point now where uh, I got to do a reflex sometimes on, on a Saturday. Oh, it's a weekend. Uh, doctor's not coming on. They got to find something else to do. But otherwise, I do like you do. I love that. Uh, I love the American 20th century traditional music. And a guy like you not knowing that was the platters. Come on. Oh, smoke, it's in your eyes. I forgot. I swear to God, I couldn't pull it together. So you listen to the show, and that gives you some support. You listen to other talk shows. That gets you through the day. That's how you do it, right? And, and mostly, uh, I, I'm fortunate to be in the hotbed in Marin County where you, if you don't have liberal friends, you've got no friends. And uh, I've been an inside member uh, for so long uh, that they're completely honest about everything the way they feel. You know, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, conservatives, you might say, arguing with being rational, but uh, in terms of the Constitution... But, but you have, so you live in Marin County, so you don't have any friends. Do you have a dog, at least? Well, no, I have uh, three little doggies, but lots of friends. They're all liberals, and they're all glad to tell you, when it comes to the Constitution, uh, their slogan is, a dissolution of the Constitution. Are they that sick? Do they not understand what they're saying? If you only knew, Dr. Sam, when you're on the inside, it'll make you tremble. Oh, you mean they don't even understand what they're calling for? Oh, I think they do. And the, and the, uh, in, in the Why do they want the Constitution dissolved? What's wrong with them? What do they think they will gain from that? Oh, they, we want to start America over. That was all on a premise that was uh, uh, unsubstantiated by... by so, they're, so they're very sick. These are sick white people who don't understand that the houses will be taken away. They have no idea that the rabble will take over the country and incarcerate them. They don't see that? I tried to express that to my friend who came back from Cuba wearing a Checha Verity t-shirt. He's a problem. Oh, it's full of phonies. They went there to harvest sugar. Why didn't they go look at the prisoners in the in the prisoner the the the, uh, the dungeons of the Castros? These stupid liberals. The biggest story of liberalism that I could tell you is that of a girl, uh, a white girl, a pretty young white girl named Amy something. I forget back twenty years ago, who went to South Africa and got murdered by a black mob, and her parents, instead of grieving for her, said they understand the mob. Do you remember that story? Uh, it's, it's an awful one, but to keep it light like you wanted to do, um, let me let you get... With so this. you're dragging me into the darkness that Obama has created for us in this country. The horrible well of, of hatred that he has created while being Mr. Haha. -Ha. He's like Lord Haha. -Ha. You know who Lord Haha -Ha was? Oh, refresh me. You please. do. Sure. We all know Lord Haha. -Ha. Obama is the Lord Haha -Ha of the fanatics on the left. Wait till the Pope comes here. I, I don't know what the media is going to do. All of these vermin in the media who hated religion, hated the Pope, hated Christianity, wait until you see how they get down and worship this commie Pope. Wait till you see that day. That's going to be the high point of your life. The savages. Hey, my friend, I'm going to send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. Take it out to one of the malls. Maybe I'll run into you one day as I walk. Teddy, I'll be right back as the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. We're entering the July 4th holiday. Most Americans want to put their mind on, on vacation mode. You can't blame them. You have a crazy man running the country who didn't get enough last week. He wants more. He says he's going to squeeze every ounce of progress he can as long as he has the privilege of holding the office. Do you understand that this is the mark of a psychotic? Do you understand that? Another man would have said, you know, I've done quite enough. The country's upset. I'm dividing people. For the sake of the nation, I'll let it coast now. I got more of my agenda accomplished than I even dreamed would be possible. But no, he wants to do more damage. He wants to hurt a traditional America even more. Do you understand this is the mark of a psychopath? Ask any psychiatrist. There's never enough for a psychopath. Do you understand that? There's a psychosis in the White House. How do you cope with it? That every day you wake up and this man is trying to do more damage to your viewpoint of America. I Admittedly, there are psychotics out there who agree with him, who hate the country, hate the founding fathers, hate the Constitution, hate the flag, 
hate the church, hate the institution of marriage, hate the police, hate the military, hate guns, hate ammunition, hate fossil fuels, hate cars. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there who hate, 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 and are glad that this psychotic is attacking these institutions. But how do you cope with them? Forget about them. How do you deal with this when there is no opposition to Frankenstein in the White House? How do you deal with it? How do you feel about a commander-in-chief who's never fired a Daisy BB gun? A man who hates guns, a man who hates the military, a man who hates virtually everything about the U.S. military's history. How do you feel about that? If a communist Chinese general had been put in charge of the military, could he do more damage in the time Obama has been commander-in-chief? I doubt it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. How do you cope with the psychotic running the airplane? The man has gotten beyond anything he ever dreamed he would have, not only in life, but in terms of undoing, uncoupling America from its founding foundings. And he says, no, I'm going to squeeze every last ounce of progress out of the office that I'm holding. That's the mark of a psychotic. Ask any psychiatrist. He can't wait to make you miserable. He hates you. He hates everything you stand for. He hates your flag. He fa hates your church. He hates your God. Listen, I could go down the list. How do you cope with this, I'm asking you? Now, I cope by doing a radio show. This is an interesting paradox. You think that I'm anguished by doing this, and I am while doing it, but I got to tell you, when I started in radio, people said to me, I was afraid that it would kill me 21 years ago. I really was. After all, I wasn't 30 years old at the time. And people said, oh, man, you know, you can't do it. You don't have the strength. Well, it's 21 years later, and I'm still going strong. In fact, I'm probably stronger than I was 10 years ago in many ways. And I'm sharper. My mind is faster. My insights are better. I don't have to put on false outrage and sound like Frito in The Godfather to compensate for my woman's voice because I have a great voice. I don't have to scream and screech and rage to make believe how mad I am while building a beachfront mansion and then sc scream like I'm one of the little people. Or, or the other one, 13,000 rental units in Atlanta making believe he's Joe Sixpack, laughing all the way to the bank. How do you people put up with these liars? I don't understand it. They're all downtrodden in there with the people and their little guys and the economy is no good. One's building a mansion in Florida. The other one has 13,000 rental units in Atlanta. And they're all poor and they're down with you. How do you put up with it? How do they bellyache about Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton? They have more money than Hillary and Bill Clinton put together. But, oh, but they're conservatives. Yeah, they're on your side. How do you put up with the lie? I don't get it. So how do I cope with it? I, so I do this show, and instead of getting weaker, I got stronger. I changed my diet to get energy to do this show. I'll never forget it. I was on a very strict diet before I started radio. I wouldn't touch a piece of meat. I mean, I wish I was still on that diet. I was a complete... Total absolutist in my diet. For years, I wouldn't touch meat. I wouldn't touch salt. I certainly wouldn't touch sugar. I'm still pretty much on that diet. But I, at the time, I had to change my diet to get energy. I had to put coal down into the furnace in order to sing the opera every day. You understand that you can't get up on the stage and sing opera without energy. So I needed the energy. I couldn't do it on a light diet. I couldn't do it on a macrobiotic diet. I mean, it would be one of those pencil-thin guys walking around looking like a Somali beekeeper. I'm not a Somali beekeeper. I have to perform, and in order to perform, I need the energy, so I changed my diet. But it hasn't killed me yet. I mean, knock wood, who knows what tomorrow will bring. Okay, I don't know where this knock wood comes from. You can't even find wood to knock on anymore. Everything's synthetic anyway. Okay, knock plastic. Knock plastic, I'm still... <laughs> Robert, knock plastic. Actually, knock mic, I'm still here. Knocking the mic. So what I'm saying is I cope by doing the show. And I, in the middle of the, the, the enragement that I feel, the rages that I feel for what this man is getting away with, and the drunks on the other side, the, the sellouts, the McConnell, you know he sold it out for another couple of billion dollar projects in Kentucky. Didn't he get coal? Did, what did he get for it? What did McConnell get for selling out to Obama? He got coal, remember? Right? He, Obama, in other words, yanked the string on the Supremes and said, okay, give him coal. Remember that? See? So McConnell got what he wanted for the coal industry in Kentucky. That's all. He did his job. That's how that worked. The other one, Bain, what did he get out of it? 
a six pack of Johnny Walker red. I don't know what this guy looks like. He could be bought for a six pack of Johnny Walker black. Never mind red. He don't even know what the single malt scotch is. If you said to him, I'll give you a case of single malt scotch if you vote for a highway bill, he wouldn't even know what a single malt scotch is. You know, him? I don't know. He don't know Johnny Walker. Give him Canadian Club and, and, and Chase Lounge for the Jacksonville retirement, wherever he's going. That one is a real stumble bum. A stew bum out of a, a, a funeral parlor in Columbus, Ohio. If you were casting for a, for a pallbearer, in Columbus, Ohio, in a movie, it'll be John Boehner. Good-looking, affable, dumb, nothing between the ears. Where'd they get this guy from? Nothing. The guy took him on a flight on Air Force One and gave him a certificate. He came off looking like a, like a schoolboy. Oh, look, I flew on Air Force One for, for, for laying down for Obama. Look at that. Happy man. Happy days are here again. And then strip all of the true conservatives of their committee assignments. Strip them of all funding. Wreck them. Destroy them. Teach them a lesson. Kill the Tea Party. Kill conservatives in America. And I'll tell you what, you'll go in Air Force One again. If you get rid of all those conservatives, Johnny boy, you're going to go on Air Force One for another flight, I guarantee, before Christmas. In fact, I'll take your whole family on a flight. Really? Yeah, no kidding. And they'll all get a certificate. All of your nephews. Bring them all in from the Ozarks. And all of the Ozarkian Bainers will get, yeah, bring them out of the back country there. We'll all take them on Air Force One for a real party. Yeah, no kidding, really? That's right. And they'll all get certificates. Just make sure you get the country, purge them of the Tea Party, Johnny. So you understand how I deal with this? As I use my wit for myself. How do you deal with it? I want to know how you deal with it. And the bigger question is, where are all of the gays on all of the atrocities of ISIS? And the fact that this guy looks the other way. The guy, the leader of the free world, in the bomber jacket, commander-in-chief, looks the other way while they're executing gays, children, women, kidnapping, rapes. Not a word from a lesbian feminist. Not a word from a gay. Why? I want to know why. Tell me why. I don't have the answer for this. Okay, let's go to a caller, Roger, on VLK Radio, line number nine. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, I'm a gay man, and I am absolutely outraged and disgusted by what this man has done. I've taken off the rose-colored glasses, and I, 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 how do I cope with it? I don't. I, I lose sleep over it. I'm angry every but day. Do other, gay, do other gay people talk about what he's doing to our freedoms, including gays? Do they not see that? Do they not see that he's that he's manipulating them by throwing them a bone? Very few. They don't. They don't realize that. I try to uh, shout it from the rafters to anybody who will listen. I hope I'm winning over a few converts. But yeah, we're we're out here. There's just very few of us. This gay marriage thing. It wasn't enough for civil unions. No, we had to force it down everybody's throat. I'm 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 fearful of the backlash that's going to come from this. To be honest. Well, I, I can assure you there will be no backlash. There is no backlash coming there because there's no there's no back to lash. There's no one to lash the back. There's no one. Do you understand there's no opposition, Roger? Don't fear a backlash. There is none. You may be right about that. Nothing. Zero. There is no lash coming because there's no one there to lash. Don't even fear a backlash. There is none. It's over. They're drugged. They're fat. They're on entertainment mode. They're on autopilot. There's no backlash. So anyway, Roger, I appreciate that at least there's someone out there who hears me. I want to reaffirm that I am a sexual libertarian. I have never, ever condemned homosexuality, have I? Uh, you may not agree with it, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Wait, you may not agree with what? With homosexuality in general. But you said you're gay. Yeah, I, I thought you said you. I'm sorry. No, no. I am a sexual libertarian, I said. Right. I myself. In other words, I say if you are an adult and you don't hurt anyone and you leave the children out of it, go ahead, do what you want. It's not for me to tell you what to do. You're not going to listen anyway. So in that sense, I'm a sexual libertarian. On the other hand, I think gay marriage is not about sexual libertarianism. I think it's about aiming at the family and undermining the family. That's my opinion on it. I think it's to subvert the country by any means necessary. Divide and conquer, I think, is what he's doing. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Listen, one of the people don't understand this. I've actually read Karl Marx's Das Kapital. I read it many years ago in college. And one of the principles, and I, could, I can't cite it exactly, were, uh, of Marxism was aimed at the family. He called it the bourgeois institution of family and how it had to be undermined in order to advance the communist agenda. Karl Marx understood that the family was the fundamental brick of a civil society. And if you could undermine family, the meaning of family itself, you could then break down the entire society. That's what they were doing here. 
Well, Obama has Saul Alinsky and uh, Frank Marshall Davis, so. <laughs> well, I understand. There you go. I, I never really, I never met a gay person who really wanted to get married. And by the way, with all the celebrations here in San Francisco, how many marriages were there? I didn't see any. Yeah, I, I have no desire to get married. I, you know, the civil union would be fine with me. That That's was... the part I don't understand. I'm not trying to be facetious. The few guys in my age group when I was younger who became gay, the last thing they wanted was to be like their parents. In fact, they chose to go with their inclinations in that direction in order not to become like their mother and father in a living room with plastic on the couch. Right, right. <laughs> no, it's a joke. It's funny, but they didn't want to fo follow that road. They wanted to do their own thing in their own way. They wanted to have a liberated sexual lifestyle. They had an inclination in that direction. They followed it. The last thing they ever wanted was to walk down the aisle in a wedding dress. Well, it's just like you said. It's, it's, to, it's more than just getting the marriage, the right to do it. It's, it's like we both said. It's to subvert, undermine, destroy from right. within. This is, this is my opinion, and you're, you say that you're a self-identified gay, gay man. Okay, so you, I don't think you're alone in that. I've had a lesbian call and agree with me 100%. Not everybody is lockstep with this revolution. Uh, that is not really the revolution we think it is. It's a revolution in the wrong direction in the minds of many people. Well, I'm going to give you a July 4th present. If you're in the reading mood, you will have my great novel that is testosterone-inducing, Countdown to Mecca, 855 How do you cope with a pilot who is driving the plane? He's locked himself in the cockpit, and he is taking the plane into a mountaintop as fast as he can. Many of us see it that way, incidentally. Now you say, well, wait, what can I do about it? I don't know what you can do, but how do you cope with it? How do you cope with it? You're banging on the cabin door saying, stop him, someone stop him. You're screaming, there's no one to help you. There's no one to get into the cockpit. Nobody can reach the madman. No one can even tell him what he's doing. He doesn't care. How do you feel about that? Are you afraid of ISIS on the 4th? You actually believe the phonies and the intelligence agencies? Every one of them lined up like on a, they were all reading the same facts or, excuse me, e email. From Feinstein down, ISIS can attack, ISIS can attack, ISIS can attack, threat level high, threat level high, ISIS can attack. Even Feinstein came away from the business deals for a few seconds. You know what? What was that? What's that one? Oh, yeah, okay, I'll put out a miss. I'm on the Senate and what committee? Now? Is now? What, where am I? Where'd you put me? Intelligence. I am the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and I can tell you that there's a, a high likelihood, a high problem, code red. Whatever those code greens ran, that Tom Ridge invented. Where is he now? He was, he was advising Slobovia for a while. He left the Department of Homeland Security, went to advise a Muslim nation. I forget which one for, for a bit. Albania, right. Tom Ridge was the, the Department of Homeland Security. And immediately left office, he went and advised uh, Albania. Now suddenly he reappeared and said, high risk of an attack. DHS, high risk of an attack. Former uh, Senator Cohen, remember him? Another great defense secretary. Another one who, who never, if you fired a Daisy BB gun next to him, he would have had a heart attack. High, high risk of an attack. They're all on the same page. Don't enjoy July 4th. High risk of attack. They want you to jump the, the, the first time you hear a firecracker go off. Why are they doing this? Why? Because there's been no attacks. So how do you justify a police state? You threaten people that attacks are coming. And if there aren't any, you make sure they are. You go find a few nuts and you let them, you let them free. You know, they're on a controller. You know how that works. And they got a few under control. Many people believe that, by the way. They have like a brainwash, like Manchurian candidates all over the country. So in other words, all right, look, we haven't had any attacks. Let's have a meeting of the intelligence communities. Look, uh, this is not good for us. There's been nothing. Uh, we claim we've stopped them, but no one would know. Now, how's that going to work? I, John, you're up. Well, the truth is that there have been no attacks, and although we've told the people out there that we've stopped numerous attacks, we have no evidence to that effect. So many of them are starting to grumble that it's all full of uh, galubi here. So we got to do something about it. Mary, what would you do? Well, I would, I would release some of the... Um, the activists that we have from uh, the control and take them off the meds and tell them what to do, put them near a thing. And, and uh, you're going to, are you suggesting that we actually let them attack? Well, in some cases, that might not be so bad. I mean, if you want to make an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs. So a few deaths here and there in a mall now and again wouldn't be so bad to uh, expand the intelligence budget for 2015. Uh, we are a little short. We've only gone up 300% in the last year in, in funding. We need another 400% for more buildings, more trips. Yes, I would say release them over July 4th. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, Harry, what would you say? Well, I would not go that far. I, I would not 
see any uh, actual injuries to the American people. Maybe have them blow up a telephone pole somewhere in Brooklyn. Maybe give them a bomb that doesn't really go off and say that you caught them with another pressure cooker bomb. Well, what if it's a woman with a pressure cooker just coming back from a, a chicken market? Like she's from Russia. She didn't know we don't even use pressure cookers. But she had it imported from, from uh, the old country. She's an, Arrest her too. Say she was a terrorist. She doesn't speak English anyway. Lock her up. It'll be good in our rhetoric against Putin. You get the picture, don't you? This is Michael Savage, and it's time to move it along. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You say, how do I cope? I'm asking, I'm asking you how you cope. I have a, a, a sardonic sense of humor. So I go on the internet, I'm on the internet all the time. So I see these stupid ads like New Rule has California drivers shocked as a woman in a bikini see her jaw dropping transfer. These are all ads, right? One odd trick fixed my erectile dysfunction, read my shocking story. Now I don't actually click on the ads because I know that they're come ons. So I figured there's only one way to fix to fix erectile dysfunction. That would be show you naked pictures of Barbara Boxer. You'd never want sex again. So therefore that that doesn't cure E D. You don't want sex. That's the end of your problem with E D, right? If you don't want sex, then it doesn't bother you. So just look at, even look at pictures of Dianne Feinstein's face. Forget the body. Just look at who's in the Congress. Dianne Mikulski, Barbara Boxer, Dianne Feinstein. Do you have to go any further than that? Look at Hillary Clinton close up in the pantsuit. Would you ever want sex again? I'm not being sexist about it. I'm just being real. I don't know what that's going to cost me reality. I could just see already tomorrow. They'll ban me from Macy's. I won't even be able to buy a belt. Me and Donald Trump won't be able to buy a cheap belt in Macy's after this. I cope with a sense of humor. It's mine. It's my own. I own it. You don't like it? Don't listen to me. Go listen to one of the government media complex uh, entertainers who read the jokes written for them by far more intelligent men who don't get any credit for it. The Ha Ha Boys, you know, John Stewart, the real genius commie, who when they come to take him away and take his property, well, so he'll say, help, help, help. The Occupy Wall Street group is here taking away my house. Right? That's what's going to happen. I can't believe we're out of time. It's two hours. What fun I have had for those of you who unfortunately have to leave me because the powers that be will not give you the third hour of this show. I wish that I could give it to you because I'm on for another big hour across America, believe it or not. I suggest you go and get a copy of Countdown to Mecca if you miss Mike. You can always read his books. If not, with God's will and your listenership, I'll be back tomorrow on your local station. For the rest of you, just hang on because my sardonic sense of humor has not left me. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah! Don't lose your sense of humor. Don't let the mad pilot in the White House locking himself in the cabin of the airplane of the good state of America, driving us into a mountaintop, stop you from enjoying yourself and ridiculing him. The last thing we have left is ridicule. Let me explain that. The day ridicule is illegal is the day you know you've lost everything. We can still ridicule them. We can, we can do anything we want. We can rip them, put them down, anything you want to do. It's legal. How do you cope? How do you cope? I read all the news stories all day long, as I say, from morning till night. I can't help it. I'm addicted. I mean, it's my business, so it's, you know what I'm saying? It's a justification. Sometimes I find myself after the show, I'm looking at the internet saying, what are you doing? The show is over. Why aren't you golfing? A, I hate golf. Too boring and too slow. Why don't you go play tennis? Never learned how. I was an innocent kid. All I did was have like a scooter that I made out of a roller skate and a piece of wood. So I don't know how to play tennis, nor did I ever want to. Again, it's too slow for my mind. Never learned. Why aren't you hiking up a mountain? Because I hate, like, pollen. I don't like mountains. I don't like hiking. Why aren't you? Seems like I sit here, so I look at the computer looking for new stories for tomorrow. 
or I take a nap, or like, for example, I have a car hobby. So every time I drive the XK, something breaks. I drive it two, three times, and it breaks, which is good because it's a hobby. So like I heard like a, a, a dinging and a danging in the front of the car. I knew it was probably a water pump. Why? From the age when I was poor and had cars that broke down, it's not like I can fix the water pump or replace the water pump, but I figured it was a water pump. So yesterday, I drove the XK to my mechanic friend up in uh, wherever, and diagnosed with the thing, with the ear, with the thing, with the stethoscope, and he said, it's the water pump, the bearings. I said, good. All right, so now we have to order the part. That's another half a day. We couldn't find a, a new one, an old one, don't know, rebuild. I like it, the part's coming. That's a hobby. It gets my mind off reality, that reality. That's reality. And then I didn't have enough trouble with the XK. When I was in Los Angeles, I bought an XK 150. Why? I needed more trouble. I got rid of the boat, so I need cars that cause trouble. I bought a beautiful, pristine XK-150 drophead coupe. There's like a showroom, like perfect, black with red leather right out of a dealer on Santa Monica Boulevard, a showstopper, paid whatever he asked, bought it. Why? I needed trouble. It takes my mind off Obama and what he's doing to the country. Everyone needs a hobby. That's my hobby, cars, dogs, bicycles, whatever the hobby may be. So uh, what I'm saying, you know, that one needs a clutch right away. The one, <laughs> I swear to God, it was slipping when I bought it. Like, truthfully, the dealer's honest. An honest dealer, I can never sort of. He's putting in a clutch for free. That's like two grand. He said, "I'll stand by the car." This is after the fact. He's look, it's going to go anyway. I'll fix it. I never had a dealer like that. So the clutch is going to be put in. I'll bring it up here to Northern California. And another one of my hobbies and how I cope is I look at the internet, I read blogs, and I look at the, sometimes the ads, like, you know, like you get, what are the, uh, that pop-up, the pop-up ads are crazy. Like, check it out. New rule has California drivers furious and shocked. It's like a skinny babe in a string bikini. I don't know what that is. I don't want to click on it. I don't know what's a come on. Next, see her jaw-dropping transformation. It looks like Hillary Clinton after four years in office. I won't click on that one. One odd trick fixed my erectile dysfunction. Read my shocking story. I won't click on it. I know it's a come on. So I thought about that. I started to laugh because I have a sense of humor. So I said, how do you cope with these idiotic ads? How do you cope with Obama? Well, I said, how do you cope with my erectile dysfunction? Answer, how to stop worrying about... So I wrote this down as a joke to myself. How to stop worrying and begin to love your, your ED. That's a funny statement. Remember that book 30 years ago, How to Stop Worrying and Start to Love the Bomb? Remember that about the nukes? How to stop worrying and start to love the bomb. It's the same thing with ED. Every guy's worried about ED. So I wrote, how to stop worrying and begin to love your ED, which is look at facial close-ups of Democrat women in Congress. Then you won't worry about your ED. You'll never want sex again. Now, what is wrong with that statement? Well, what's wrong with it is I guarantee you these, these monsters will probably pass a Senate bill introduced by Barbara Mikulski or Dianne Feinstein or Barbara Boxer, which will be the Conservative Talk Elimination Act. The Conservative Talk Elimination Act, Senate Bill Number 2030504, and that'll be the new act, the Bolsheviks. Oh, the Bolsheviks. Speaking of Bolsheviks, how do you cope with the Bolsheviks who have wrecked the nation? How do you cope with the psychotic who's locked himself into the cabin of the uh, airplane called the United States of America and is driving it into a mountain? How do you cope with this guy? WJR Steve, how do you cope with this nut? You know what, Dr. Savage, I've tried and tried and tried, and I'm at the point where I'm just ready to give up. What, what, give up what? What would you give up to give up? What would you do to give up? Well, you know, I, you know, I get up for work at 3 in the morning. I drive an hour to work, you know, and I think, you know, I listen to the radio, blah, blah, blah. I get to work, and most of my coworkers uh, happen to be African-American, so... They have their comments, and we have our little group talks. And, you know, I, anything that I have to say is just, it's just, if I say anything about Obama, about the liberal party in general, it, they look at me like I'm insane, and I'm instantly excluded from the group. You know, that's how communists work. They don't want to hear any other opinion. And don't confuse them with the facts. Their minds are already warped. It's, they don't even want to hear what I got to say. You know what they say? He's the best president we've ever had. I said, look, this guy makes Jimmy Carter look like a genius. They don't even know who Jimmy Carter is, though. That's the point. That's the funny part. They're looking at me like, who's Jimmy Carter? Okay, let me, let me put you at ease, Stephen. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an answer on how to deal with this. Don't talk to them about politics. There's a saying that hell is a place where there is no reason. When you go to work, you're going to hell. 
If there is no reason, do not talk with them. Hell is a place where there is no reason. Your coworkers live in hell. Don't go there with them. All right. Yeah. That's Why do you have to talk about politics with them? Just talk about cars or women or food or whatever. Stay away from politics. Their minds are warped. They're not going to believe a word you say. They don't want to know anything about it. They have no capacity to understand criticism of him because they're locked into the doxy of their race. No matter what he does, they're going to support him. It's the same with almost every other minority group. They will support. They'll round the, uh, the circle of wagons. It's the same with the Jews. You think it's any different? Same with the Jews. When, uh, what a Jew says, they're going to say, support that Jewish person. You take un any minority group, Hispanics, same thing. So it's not, you know, limited to, to uh, folks of African-American heritage. You're going to find that with any minority group. They're very defensive about their, uh, uh, let us say, uh, religion or their race, and they're going to defend anyone of their religion or their race. So I would not enter that, that dialogue. It's not going to go anywhere. You can present the facts. They're not going to listen to you. And if you're a white man that tries to say something, they, they give you a look of offense, too, like, how dare you even comment? You're a Caucasian male. So why do you even try to comment? I'm telling you how to cope. Ignore that part of the, uh, of, of the day. Don't deal with politics with them. Why must you tell them what the realities are? Yeah, you're right. And from now on, I'm not even... Don't do it. Talk some of them are probably very nice guys who you like. Some aren't. So talk to the guy. Say, look, I don't want to do politics. You know, turn it into a joke. You're not going to believe a word I say. Can we not talk about politics? Let's do something else. Talk about anything. Right. And then you'll get you'll get through the day. You won't eat your heart out. You won't have any antagonism. You won't feel like you're going to go nuts. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just wondering. All right. So good. I, I've, I light, I've lightened your load. I've lightened your load. I'm sending you a book. Don't bring it to work, by the way. Michael Savage's Countdown to Make It. Don't bring it anywhere near your coworkers because they're liable to ask you to burn it in their present. Yeah. In their presence. Yeah. Tell them a joke. Why don't you tell them a joke? See what happens. Talk about erectile dysfunction with your coworkers. See how that goes over. Yeah, yeah. Stay Steve, like why don't you ask him, to, say to them, look, guys, I don't want to talk about politics. Do any of you suffer erectile dysfunction? See if that goes over well with coworkers. See if a man will ever admit it. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's oh say they, they look at you like you're crazy. Say, I figured out how to stop worrying about erectile dysfunction. All I do is look at facial close-ups of Hillary Clinton. Because then I don't even want sex, so I'm not worried about ED at that point. Maybe see if they'll laugh at that one. Maybe you can reach them for humor. And that makes me not want to have sex ever again. I, well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you got to do. Or, or see her uh, in all her glory in a pantsuit. Notice all of the shots of her are for the chest up. Why do they block the bottom if she's proud of her? You know what I'm saying? God, I don't know what I'm going to do. At least Obama's a fairly attractive human being. He's thin, you know, I'm tall, handsome guy. Whatever is politics, I hate the politics. But okay, guys, presentable. That's why he's so popular. What are we going to do if we get the bowling pin president? I don't know what, how we're going to deal with that one. All right, I'm sorry that uh, you're having such a bad time in life. You know what we should play when I come back, which is the bypass Bolsheviks and Buicks done in 2002, I believe, in that election, right? We have time for bi bypass balls. No, no, I want to save it because then I'll have to come back and actually improvise and I'll have a, an attack from. I'll be right back. Be here, be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800 289 2646 or SwissAmerica.com. So back in the year 2000, remember the election where Al Gore was running and the Demon Cats used legal shenanigans which wasted millions of taxpayer dollars on counting, recounting, and recounting a third time the punch cards, not to mention the financial burden on the judicial system, right? Remember that time? Well, I was in Florida during that election and I observed the, the it was ground zero for, for stupid liberals, self-hating, self-defeating, suicidal liberals who don't even know what century they're living in, let alone Century City. And I wrote a poem called Bo uh, Bypass Bolsheviks and Buicks. I want to play it for you. Let's hear it now. I wrote the poem called, well, I called it Election Results Year 2000. It's on page 121. It really should be renamed uh, Gulfstream Liberals or uh, Stand Up Stalins or Trotsky's and Delis or Bypass Bolsheviks and Buicks. Because some of the lines in this poem about these 
Gulfstream liberals from Palm Beach down to about Deerfield Beach was prescient. You know, and I want to play it for you right now on the Savage Nation. I want you to see how I looked right through them. I looked through them like Madoff did, but I didn't try to ri uh, rip them off. I tried to ridicule them into an awakening. And guess what? They're still schmucks. Only they're broke schmucks now. Listen to this. 38 states said yes to Bush. 12 states said yes to Gore. Are some states more equal than other states? South Florida, for example. The land of the New York Communistic Front. The millionaires grifting off the welfare state. Pretending to each other the moral indignation of the downtrodden. Acting with heads held high and jaws thrust out. As victims of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire, <laughs> Lexus liberals with Volkswagens on their brains, condo commies, lunchroom Lenins, stand-up Stalins, miserable <laughs> Maos, pathetic Pol Pot Marxists using black street gangs as their body armor, stealing ballots, grifting SSI, faking disabilities, voting for Al Gore, all in a day's work, South Florida, the land of sunshine, schmoozing, and now stupidity. The whole world now knows New York Communist Democrats are too stupid to vote straight, but smart enough to twist the truth when their benefits are threatened. South Florida, the land of suntan Trotskys and Delis, bypassed Bolsheviks and Buicks, air-conditioned chays and condos, loud, lewd losers in limbo, stuck between their investments and their liberalism, lost to their religion, fervent in their non-belief, save the DNC, their new religion, corned beef commies, buffet <laughs> bolshies, jogging jokesters stuck in Camelot fantasies, Kennedy their last idol, a drunk profligate warmonger covered for by his beautiful wife, Hillary, their personal Evita Perone, Bill, their shameless Shagets, Tipper, their tipsy donut, Al, their Shabbos Goy, South Florida, the land of sun and SOBs. Oh, I wrote I that it. in 2000. I mean, I think it was pretty good. You know, you should applaud it's truthfully funny. if you're in a room, sit and applaud. That was good. I mean, it's still funny. You know, funny is funny. It's funny years later, 2000, and now it's 20, what, 15? 15 years later, it's very funny. It's still true. I mean, if you go to South Florida or any of the retirement areas where these people live, you know it's true. All they care about is their investments and their social security. And on the, uh, the same token, they're voting a socialist state which will take away their investments and their social security. How do you figure that out? Maybe they're not as smart as you think they are? Anyway, how do you cope by talking, by, by, by uh, how do you cope with all of this, with what's going on? with the debacle that this man is imposing upon us after the red diaper dopa baby lawyers have seized power. Now the criminals have been given more freedom than cops. Now the junk lawsuits have proliferated. Now that so many school children can't add, spell, or write. Now that pornography has penetrated every home with a TV or a computer. Now that violence has become the national sport. Now that athletes, once role models, have become models of trash. Sex, once sacred, has become a cheap sneeze in the night. Now that unborn babies are slaughtered, their body parts sold for profit by factories of death. How do you cope now that diseased and criminal immigrants are flooding into America? How do you cope now that white males are scapegoated as the incarnation of evil? How do you cope now that voting is rigged? How do you cope now that thought crimes are being targeted? How do you cope now that monopolies have appeared in all major industries? How do you cope now that America's moral standing has been destroyed by Obama? How do you cope that the U.S. media once a watchdog has become a tool of the Democrats? How do you cope now that the jewels of our, natural, of our nuclear secrets were sold to China for donations to the Democrats? Hmm? Yep, this is the society that we've inherited. Not since the Weimar Republic of pre-Nazi Germany has decadence so completely permeated a free society. I stand by those words. They're still true. How do you cope with it is the question. Kathy on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, Michael. It's Kathy from Bergen County, New Jersey, 40 minutes outside of the uh, west, outside of Manhattan. All right, so how do, you co how do you cope? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Don't give us your home address, please. I cling to your voice, and I tune into your show every day. Even I'm very, very fortunate to have a, a job where I can take some time and listen to you and that helps. Well, what is it about my show that makes you have any any sense of relief? What do I do for you? You 
you validate how I feel, and I feel I'm a very um, practical person. And All right, so what you're saying is at least somebody else in the media sees the world the way you see it. It's not a lockstep the way that NBC, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, and Fox would have you believe it is. You see what I see, so you don't feel quite isolated, right? Yes, exactly. And I have an idea that maybe your listeners could try. I have a- right, Hold on, hold on. We'll come back to Kathy. 40 minutes outside of New York City, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. We got walls, houses, glocks, you know what I mean, police, firemen. But a dog thinks, all right, he does it, nothing happens to him, I'll do it. He's sleeping the whole show. Normally in the middle of the show, he stretches and he wants lunch. But be because today I ordered a focaccia salad, I'm trying to like be good because I had bad Chinese food last night. Awful, God. Man, P.F. Chang is going to be the worst Chinese food in the history of China. I don't believe it. My, my arms blew up. My ankles blew up. My wrists hurt. It was delicious, sort of. Not really. It's Airsats Chinese food for kids with ADD. Uh, children throwing rice. and It was awful. But I didn't want to go anywhere else. So because I ate a salad today to compensate for the bad Chinese food, the dog's asleep because he didn't even smell anything good. I mean, you take a salad out around a dog. No wonder he went back to sleep. <laughs> was he want lettuce? No. Remember I talked about mysticism at the beginning of the week, right? I know many of you are listening. You're enjoying me rapping, right? This is a rap show. It's like rap. Guy rapping. Rap, rap, rap. He's having fun. He's talking. Let me listen. It's not bad. It's like music. It's a song. So to move away from politics, I want to move back to mysticism. Remember I started the week with that? I said I had been away last week. And I got into thinking about how do we cope with this? ISIS is killing, murdering, raping, and Obama is celebrating gay marriage. I said it's God's hand. Remember I said that? And I said I did it because I was studying mysticism and I saw the balance going on. ISIS wouldn't exist was it not for God controlling it all, is my opinion. I know it sounds horrible. You say, how can God want such evil? I'll let you figure it out. Ask him the next time you see him. But it's God's hand, in my opinion, because I don't think anything happens on the earth without some divine intervention, good and evil, incidentally. And maybe the evil is meant to awaken us to the evil so we finally... Stand up to it. I don't quite know the answer, but I know I knew that it was as a result of my studying the mysticism that I came to that conclusion and let me live a little more uh, e easily, living with the insanity that we're living in, right? So I was reading about what happened in 1896, the beginning of a mystical Jewish movement. I'm going to read you two paragraphs. It's called the Lubavitcher Movement. You may have seen them. They're the black coats running around. Now, there's two sects, or at least two sects of black coats in the Jewish world one of the, the, the one are the Lubavitch and they're very politically conservative incidentally and then there's the other ones with the sideburns and the far that's different I'm gonna read you this and you'll see what mysticism sounds like so he wrote this one day in the summer of 1896 my father took me for a walk in the fields the crops were ripening a light breeze moved through the sheaves ears of corn nodded and whispered to each other and my father said to me see my son divinity each movement of every ear of corn and of every tuft of grass was anticipated in the primal thought of the first Adam who could foresee the future of all the generations. We had gone into the forest and I absorbed in our conversations and I absorbed in our conversation, stirred by the sound of my father's voice and the purity of his words had distractively broken off a leaf from a tree and was holding it in my hand, tearing it to bits and dropping the pieces on the ground. My father said, the Holy Hour used to say, apart from the fact that every leaf of a tree is a creature that has in its in it divine life and was created by the name, blessed be he, for some pre-designed purpose, there is also contained in every leaf a spark of some soul that has descended into this world in order to be redeemed. Can you believe this? I actually see the world in that way. I, I think many of you do as well. You do understand what I'm saying to you. It goes along with the popular song from a long time ago, every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky, I know why I believe, right? Isn't that what it's all about? In other words, I can feel the divinity quivering. If I watch a bird or I see a bee or I see I let a bee out of the house, I let a fly out of the house, I try to let a spider out of the house, why? Because I don't need to kill it. I don't know what I need to kill it for. And yet compare me and my Western view, my enlightened view with ISIS. They are the antithesis of divinity. Although they wrap themselves in Islam, and they believe they represent Islam, and if they really do represent Islam, that's a bigger question. What are we going to do about that problem? How can they hate everything living? 
that does not conform to their psychotic 1200 year old view of the world how can how can that be how can they kill people how can they shoot them for not fasting during ramadan how can they shoot boys for watching soccer how can they shoot women who practice sorcery you ask yourself that question they are the opposite of life they are representative of death and until the western world understands the danger they are in we are all in danger you see get it so let me go on again with the lubavitch movement so he writes this, the father said to him in 1896, and now regard how careful a man must be in this world, whether awake or sleep. You believe that? For in what way is he who is awake different from the man who sleeps? In inner powers and feelings, every person who sleeps has outer powers, but his inner powers are blurred. Is that not why one can in a dream see a thing and it's opposite at the same time? And how do we know whether a person is awake or asleep? See, even now, as we were speaking about divine providence, you absentmindedly plucked the leaf, held it in your hand, tore it into little pieces, and scattered the pieces to the ground. Should one regard the creations of the Holy One, blessed be he so lightly? The Creator, blessed be he, wrought this creation too. For some purpose, there is divine life in it. Within its own body is contained its own life. In what way is the eye of the leaf less than your eye? Yes, there is a great difference. The leaf is in the category of the vegetative world and you in the category of the human. But everything created has its own end and its divine obligation to accomplish something in the world. And that's a quote. It's from reminiscence of Rabbi Yosef Isaac Schneerson, the sixth Lubavitch rabbi. And so what I'm saying to you is I actually look at the world to a great extent in that way. I see the divinity in a fly. I saw the glint in the eye of an animal I was supposed to perform a, an anatomical experiment upon. So am I here by accident on radio? Am I merely an entertainer? I'm asking you, the audience, those of you who are still hanging on in the third hour. It's a long, long day across America, yet you're hanging on. I don't know how many of you listen in the third hour. Many. I'm on some huge stations in the third hour. KSFO, San Francisco, WJR in Detroit, to name a few. They carry the show. Huge audience in this hour. It's different than the first two hours in many ways. And especially now that it's July 1st and we're entering summer. I change in the summer. I go into summer mode. I feel it happening. I know you have to go into summer mode no matter what the drunk pilot uh, of the good ship America may be doing. I mean, you have to cut it off at a certain point. It's July 4th weekend. You're going to celebrate in some way. You're going to try and barbecue, shoot off some fireworks, be with friends, have a few drinks. That's what you're going to do. You're going to forget the maniac who's taking the plane into a mountaintop, trying to snuff out America. Okay, so I understand that. But I'm going to ask you again, those of you who are listening. Do you think that I being on the radio at this stage of my life with all of the trials and tribulations that I have been through across my 21 years in, in, in radio, and I've been through some that should have ended my career, do you think I'm here by accident? Do you, do you think there was a divine reason I'm here? I believe there was a divine reason. I don't believe this happened by accident. And moreover, I'll go back a little farther. Do you remember how I trained to be a university professor? You know how I killed myself to get a PhD from a great university with an almost 4.0 index with a thesis that was published in its entirety as a book, unheard of, right? And still they wouldn't hire me because I was a white male. They hired far less qualified individuals, women and minorities who couldn't come near me in accomplishment. Now take a look at the universities today and tell me if I could have survived had I got what I wanted. Now, I didn't know at the time that although the doors were closed to me by the vermin on the left, they were actually doing me a favor. They didn't think they were doing me a favor, but they were also part of the divine plan. By locking me out of the university and making me walk on hot coals, I had to cross the Red Sea. And in crossing the Red Sea, I found what I'm really designed for. I was not designed for that world where every word would have been scrutinized by the maniac communists who run the universities today. They're firing people for sneezing in the wrong direction. If you sneeze to the right, you get fired on the campuses by the fascists called liberals. It's astounding to me. I wouldn't have lasted. I wouldn't have lasted a few years had I gotten what I wanted, no matter what the field I was in. So I'm in the field I wanted to be without knowing I wanted to be here. Is that not divinity? I ask you. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that what's happening to America under this maniac who is crashing the plane into a mountaintop and nobody seems to be able to stop him. He has locked the cabin door. He's taking us down like the uh, German pilot. As far as I can tell, this man is out to destroy us because he had the biggest week in the history of the presidency, and he says, oh, I'm going to squeeze the last ounce 
of progress as long as I'm in this office? How much more can he do to wreck the nation? Everyone knows that. Everyone understands this. And I mean everyone. I mean those of you who listen to the show religiously. I don't care about the others. They're not my audience. I'm not trying to appease them. So what I'm saying to you is I believe that Obama and his almost demonic exercise of power against the people is part of God's plan. I don't know how it plays out. I don't know what God has in mind. The country has never gone through anything like this. The nation has never been seized by a light dictatorship. The nation has never been seized by a man as maniacal as this without any opposition. No, it's never happened before. So we're in a new place and it's in God's hands. And that's why I said at the beginning of the show, only God, it's gonna, no, I said it another way. I said it will take an act of God to stop this man from destroying us entirely. Those are my words. And now perhaps if you put that together with what I just said, in this long about discussion of mysticism, you will understand what I meant by saying only an act of God can stop Obama. And I'd like Doug Lynn, who does all of my editing on this show, to take the first piece and put it together with this piece, and you'll understand the divinity of what I just said to you, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, so what I'm saying is it's in God's hands. Now, maybe it's, you know, all right, like sound like your grandmother saying, don't, you don't worry about things. I didn't say don't worry about things. We have a madman in the White House. I'm going to stand by those words. The man is by definition crazy. He has the biggest victories of his life, unexpected, by the way. And he wants more. He says he's going to squeeze every ounce of progress out of the remaining years. The people can't take it anymore. Now, he's a force of pure evil against those of us who are traditionalists, constitutionalists, however you want to put it. He is pure evil. He is the antithesis of everything American. Opens an embassy in Cuba while people are still rotting in prison without talking about human rights. He is the antithesis of everything good. He is the antithesis of everything American. He is everything we warned you about. But there's no opposition party and no press. So I say it's in God's hands. God created him. God put him in power. That was my story about mysticism. I'm trying to tell you that something is going to happen that is unexpected, that is going to counter what he is doing to this country. I'm going to give you an, I have so many things I want to say to you. I'll have to do it tomorrow because I got great callers. Let's go to Carla on line three. Go ahead, please, Carla. You're on the Savage Nation. Thank you, Dr. Savage, for taking my call. Yeah, I was, I listen to you most every day, and you ask what people thought of your, your thoughts. And I think, I think personally that they're creative, innovative, and redemptive. And what I mean by redemptive is you take the destructive and you turn it into something constructive. And I thank you for that. That is right. And I'm saying you can only worry so much about what this maniac is doing to the country. And you have to leave it in God's hands because there's no opposition party to stop him. We lost the press a long time ago. We lost the opposition party a long time ago. There's nothing standing between him and, between him and absolute dissolution of this country. I'm saying it's in God's hands and it's going to take an act of God to stop him. But something good is going to come out of all of it is my belief. And I want to expound on that in a minute. I have such little time. All of a sudden, I've walked into a new world by reading to you some, some mystical thoughts about the movement of a leaf on a tree, right? Because I actually believe that. I see it every time I walk uh, in nature. I feel it in the breeze that's passing my face, by the way. I can see the divinity. So what I'm saying to you is there's something bigger going on. Something is going to come out of this that he doesn't expect, that the Democrat socialists don't expect, and I don't know what it is. I, I know what it is. I'm just observing that the, the history of nature would indicate something decent is going to come of this. So I don't know what it is. You look back in World War II. Now, how could you say that was good? It was not good. It was horrible. Terrible. Horrible. Now, I've heard this argument that all the Jews killed in the Holocaust, six million by some estimates, who were tortured and murdered. And by the way, there were nine million non-Jews killed and murdered by Hitler. Incidentally, just it's a fact of reality. Anyone who opposed them was put into the camps and killed. All those people have died. Now, I've heard Jewish mystics say to me that were it not for the Holocaust, there'd be no Israel. I've heard that. I don't buy that. But that's an example of what they believe. That had there been no sympathy 
for the Jewish people, there would be no state of Israel. So you could argue, well, maybe there shouldn't have been a state of Israel. Maybe that puts the Jews at greater risk. I'm giving you an example of how mystical people look at certain world events. So taking that example, you could say that what Obama is doing to damage America will eventually lead to something good. I don't know what that good can be. I don't know if there's any chance for any good to emerge from what this man is doing in decimating our traditions and our institutions. I don't know if there'll be anything left from that we can rise like the phoenix from the ashes, so to speak. Mark, on KSFO, I think you're going to have the last word. Fire away. Make it a minute or less, please. Fire away. Yeah, Israel has to exist. They came to birth at the 69th Jubilee, Michael. They had to exist. I have this book written back in the 1800s. Uh, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman gave it to me back years ago. He's the uh, president of Pensacola Bible Institute. And in there, the guy wrote, remember now, this is in the 1800s, that something big is going to happen on the 69th Jubilee, and he would not live to see it. Yeah, but what do you think is going to happen as a result of, of the maniac in the White House decimating our institutions? What is going to come of it that's good? Well, Moses was told by the Almighty that Pharaoh was raised up for the purpose of showing his power in him. Remember in Exodus? Even for this same... Uh, so you're saying this is the same thing with Obama, who's a new Pharaoh? Well, evil temporarily... Yeah, is well, we have so much to talk about. Unfortunately, we're flat out of time. It's been an amazing three hours. Maybe I'll do more mysticism on a daily basis, which leads us to uh, theology, which leads us to philosophy, which leads us to... Uh, of politics. It all goes in a circle. It's all connected. It's the Savage Nation. I want to thank you all for listening and bearing with me in these troublesome times.